Hello listeners, this is the first episode of our D&D podcast, Tales from the Dark Dragon's Inn. We play together each week online, and this has resulted in the occasional interesting audio hitch. These improve significantly as we go, so please do bear with us in these early episodes. If, like me, audio quality is an absolute must for you, I'd recommend listening to a couple of episodes to get a feel for us, and then jumping ahead to episode 1A. This is a recap episode which will bring you up to speed and get you right into the thick of the story without having to deal with any of our audio hiccups. Our group is currently following one of the official Wizards of the Coast campaign guides. However, it's being run in a homebrew alternate universe version of the Forgotten Realms. There are a lot of changes, the main one you'll notice being the treatment of race. All you need to know to be up to speed is that the majority of races live in relative harmony, save for humans and elves who are widely mistrusted by all. If you're interested in learning more, please visit our website, talesfromthedarkdragonsinn.co.uk, or follow us on Twitter at Dark Dragons Inn. Now, let me introduce our players. Hello, I'm Vinny. I play Murren, the half-orc monk. He has a slender build, dark green skin, blue eyes, and coarse dark hair tied into a ponytail. He dresses simply in a loose shirt, breeches, and sandals, which he wears underneath a traditional monk's rope tied at the waist with rope. He also wears a bracelet patterned with scales which was given to him by his master Creed. It bears the symbol of Bahamut. As a monk of the Order of the Stoneclaw, he has set out to learn more of the wider world, also seeks an old acquaintance, one who he hopes has answers about the events surrounding the tragic fate of his best friend. I'm Liz and I play Toby, a warlock of the Raven Queen. Toby is a tiefling, six foot tall and of slender build. His eyes are purple and he wears his purple black hair short. His skin is a pale grey and he has horns which curve backwards and to the sides before tapering off into fine points. He wears a turtle neck vest on top, both in different shades of purple. has a long thin tail ending in a tuft of hair. Often perched on his head is his spirit raven, Oz. Toby is currently hunting for a cure for his sister Isla, who he left in the care of a friend. Hi, I'm Nina, and I play Mix, the Asimar Warlock of the Fae. Mix is 5 foot 10, with one gold eye, the other a deep red, and she has little horn nubs on her forehead, showing subtle traits of her mixed lineage. Her hair is long, purple tinted silver, and she wears an oversized burgundy cloak. Mix was raised in the woods by her grandmother, the next assassin, and is currently on a journey to learn the truth of her family. I'm Tom, and I'm playing the delightfully oblivious Urbach Voss, Lizard Man Wizard. Urbach's basically your average man-shaped lizard, about 5'10 with green scales, yellow underbelly, and a head not unlike a Blossoraptor. As well as a rucksack and travelling clothes, he wears a traditional, though tattered, doctor's coat. Urbach is an ex-slave who worked with the sawbones and the wastes before hiding in a pile of post-revolt corpses to make his escape. He now travels the world, peddling his medicinal skills, whilst looking to save his scientific curiosities about life, death, and everything in between. In this episode, we have a guest player, Tom, playing the character of the Doomsinger. The character surrounded in mystery, tall, slim, wearing a hooded cloak that hides his features, and a finely crafted porcelain mask that covers his entire face. Little is known about this character, but much will be revealed. And I'm Ray, your host and game master. And I play, well, just about everyone else. Now, without further ado, please give a warm welcome to our host tonight. Welcome to Tales from the Dark Dragon Inn. I am your auditor, the Doomsinger. Many are the guests who pass through these humble doors, but tonight I speak of a select few. Perhaps you will have heard of them. I speak, of course, of the Scales of Justice. Please, please, hold your applause. Though their names are great and carry much weight, not always was it so. Tonight the tale of their humble beginnings, as they began so long ago. Are back. You have been in the Dark Dragon's Inn now for roughly two weeks. While you've been here, the crowds of people have been coming and going. It's been a fairly regular stream. Most nights and most days seem to be quite bustling. It's a very 
active in due to the nature of the services that it provides, being an adventuring hall where travelers looking for work come and find work, or they can await letters or any kind of information that's on the road. This is essentially a central hub for that kind of exchange. Today, however, is unusually quiet. The majority of the patrons you've seen over the past few weeks have not been here. They left on a recent caravan. Two or three days ago, you received a letter. The letter was from your contact who was informing you that he had found what he was looking for. The original manuscripts of the Order of Slen, which is something that you had sent him to recover purely on the basis so that you could work out exactly what they had done so that you could work out how to do it right. Because wizards, though they claimed to be, they just weren't really up to your standards. You are keen to leave. But on your own, you're not likely to make it that far. The road is dangerous, and you've been looking for a party to travel with, or some adventurers you can hire. You're not particularly picky at this point. You have learned that in the coming days, there will be a trade caravan route where they will both be hiring guards and also willing to take on passengers. They will be heading to Baldur's Gate via a town called Greenest. When they get to Baldur's Gate, they'll essentially dump their goods, sell on their wares, buy new ones and head back the way they came. Just because that's fairly common, Baldur's Gate has a very stringent trade policy and doesn't tend to have much in the way of letting people pass through. Today, the bar is quiet. The barman is still tending his wares, going around, buffing the counter. You're familiar with him. His name is Vestirion, and he is a dwarf. He's a rather tall dwarf, so you guess he's probably not full blood, but a dwarf he is nonetheless. You are enjoying your breakfast for what enjoyment can be passed for when it comes to civilized food. When two strangers enter, and you have not seen them before, one of them is a tiefling, and the other one is an Asimar. Toby, Mix, you guys have found your way to the quiet town of Zenstucker. The roads have been clear. When you arrive, it's about as small as you've heard. The buildings are not particularly flashy. It's a very, very small village. And that makes the sheer scope and size of the Dark Dragons Inn something to behold. You could fit several of the average building size of this village inside Dark Dragon's Inn, and there would be more room to spare. When you walk in through the front doors, it's dead. There is a single barman behind the bar, buffing the counter. There is a lone lizard man in the back of the bar. As you walk in, the barman looks up. Hello, friends! Welcome to the Dark Dragons! And he, he shouts this literally across the hall because he sees you and is so pleased to see someone today. This I, I wave is not... Sorry, frantically but... back at him. Hello, friend! So you've heard that this is like a hive of activity. This place should be bustling, but it's pretty dead. You wonder perhaps if it's the time of day or maybe you're in the wrong place. Who can tell? I turn to Mix and I'm just like, I think we might have been lied to. I'm like, maybe we just got the date wrong. And you see the barman, he gestures you over, unwilling to scream across the tavern and interrupt the only patron he has that's paid for anything. I'm very reluctant to move forward. <laughs> I just I'm march going over to, to the bar and look at him with big shining eyes and be like, Can I have a glass of water, sir? He's like, yeah, I'm yes, going yes, to stare pointedly at him. Just stare at them from the other side of the bar. And Vestirion, he leans under the bar and he brings out the fanciest goblet you've ever seen. He fills it with water and he says, Well, you may as well enjoy it. It's not like we have anybody else here right now. Why is it so... Uh, for somewhere with such grandeur, this is awfully quiet. Is this normal? Is Time! Oh, people come and go. There's a caravan recently. It took most of my customers, but it's fine. There will be more. Caravan. And you are here! Yes. You're kind of looking over at Toby, kind of stuck on the word caravan. Go ahead and roll a history check to see what you know about the Dark Dragon's Inn. What you know of the Dark Dragon's Inn is that it is the beginnings of a trade hub, but largely in terms of information. And it is also a point where people hire out adventurers, travelers and the like. So it's not too uncommon for a, a large traveling caravan to do things like hire people to work for them, to help protect the caravans, to take passengers onto bigger cities. People pay for space on the caravan so that they can travel with ease and not have to travel the roads on their own by foot. So what he's implying here is, is there's just been a big old caravan train that's come through town recently and most of his clients have either hired their way onto it themselves or they have been hired to travel with the caravan. And this is not, you gather by his demeanor, a particularly unusual experience. 
Can I insight um, check him? You can insight check him. Yeah. Um, <laughs> by this point, I've stopped standing by the door and have joined Mix by the bar. And it, it, another you come up with glass a name of water for, your for crow? my friend, please. He's like, yes, of course. And he he brings Fuck, up. I did not. He he goes get to get your class. Um. Yeah. Do you have your crow on insight out at the moment? I do. Yeah, I mean, he seems very friendly, he seems very open, and he has a very honest face. He has the yeah. real reason to lie to you. He wants your money. So he brings up a really ornate tankard, and he places it, and it's filled with water. He says, ah, for you. He cocks his head, he starts waving his finger at you, Toby. Hmm, hang on. Wait, 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 wait. I think I have something for you. I narrow my and eyes. <laughs> he reaches under the counter and he brings out this bag and he starts going through it and you can see that like bits of paper falling out and stuff and he pulls out a scroll. Uh, what's your name, stranger? Toby. He very, I very reluctantly answer. And he goes, ah, then this is for you. And hands it and you see that there's a tag on the scroll and it says Toby, bird boy. <laughs> Nick, uh, you're watching this interaction with, I'd say, curiosity. I'm gonna say it was a little really hard not to re like just snatch the scroll and be like, "Ooh, what's this?" <laughs> you're thinking Toby, about so... that, like you're looking at the, you're looking at Toby receiving this letter. You're like, "Hmm," and you hear a little tink, 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 and you feel a patting on the side of your leg. Kind of shake my head off out of the dead zone of staring and go to check my my little clink clinking thing. You look down and there appears to be a very small goblin who is wearing a little tweed jacket and this floppy red hat. He looks up, mistress, and Mixed you look at kind him of squeals a little bit. <laughs> you notice that this goblin's eyes are extremely dull and glazed over almost its expression is it's really blank it's looking up at you with very focused attention the lady of the words seem like they're struggling with the like they're trying to work through this sentence it shakes its head puts its hand up and in its hand is a scroll and it is holding it up i kind of like tilt my head a little bit but take the scroll from this teeny tiny goblin and say thank you as soon as you take the scroll, the goblin blinks, its eyes clarify. It looks around and it looks up It looks around the tavern and goes, <laughs> You okay, little guy? Yes, I'm gonna be late. <laughs> he just like staggers out. So you are currently in the bar, either looking out or reading your letters. Okay, so uh, Murren and Doomsinger, you find yourself wandering into a sleepy looking town. The houses are fairly inexpensively built, shall we say. They're small, good for day-to-day, -day sort of common, ordinary usage. The town is really super plain. You are here for the Dark Dragon's Inn. As you are walking down the streets, you do see that there seems to be a distinct lack of people. And then all at once, you start to hear yelling. Not lots of yelling, just one voice. And specifically, it's shouting, Slovis! Slavers! Get back, you cowards! And this seems to be coming from the direction that you are heading in, as a matter of fact. Very, very little place, isn't it? Sounds like someone needs help. How do you approach this? Are you just going to charge off in that direction, Marin, or are you going to saunter as per Doomsinger's suggestion? Proceed with caution. A, a slight jog. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you quicken Bit your pace slightly. Yeah, yeah, sure. I'll continue to walk at my steady pace behind him. <laughs> sure. No swinging my sword casually in hand. You run down a side street, turning towards one of the largest buildings in this village. And this the building that you are nearing is large enough that you could actually fit several of the smaller houses inside of it. It's huge. But what grabs your attention is as you turn the corner, you see a six foot eight bugbear standing with a giant glaive in front of him and he's holding it in a defensive position and behind him is an eight-year-old girl and she is clinging to the back of his leg and he is facing down a trio of elves and you can see them sort of circling around him and getting closer he is just doing his best to puff his chest up look as fierce as he can but he's not doing a spectacularly good job at it you just keep seeing him shout slavers, and then he turns and sees you and says, Quickly! Help me get rid of these! And the elf kind of in charge looks at you, and he just looks back at the bugbear, and he motions to his men who draw their weapons. 
And the guard says, this is, are you going to cause me trouble? Gentlemen, I think you'll find this one's already mine. And the bugbear... Uh, so are you wearing your mask right now or not? Yes. The bugbear, as soon as you say this, the bugbear turns and like he re-angles himself in front of the little girl who kind of shifts around behind him and he also looks at you defensively. The elves make no moves to respond to your claim. It's going to be another one of those days, priest. You can try and roll a persuasion Aye. if you like. Before you do, however, you're saying this from down the street, are you moving closer before you make this claim, or...? I'll still be walking along casually swinging my sword in the style sure. that one might swing a cane. The bugbear looks at you defensively, but you notice that his defensive turn towards you is more posturing than anything else. He wants the elves to think that he's against you, but he's, he sussed you out. He sees Oof. through your nonsense. Unfortunately, so do the elves. And they are not dissuaded in any way. What do you reckon, priest? Time for a bit of a ruck? Well, I guess there's no way around it. Alright, off you go then. Freeze frame. So you guys Martin. have been standing around for a couple of minutes, just going through your letters, drinking your water. This lizard man from the other side of the room has been narrowing his eyes at you and trying to get your attention, but I don't think either <laughs> of you have particularly noticed. And as you're sort of standing there around, sipping your water, and uh, Vesterian's just sort of casually making polite conversation, a dwarven man bursts in through the door. He is out of breath. He looks extremely distraught. He bends over double, and he looks up. Please, help! They have my daughter! Els! Slavers in town! He points out of the door, and as he does so, you hear a loud voice from the streets shouting, Slavers! Slavers, get back, you cowards! Mix kind of like glances over at Toby and like kind of gives him the sign that we need we need to help. We need to we need to get rid of these slavers. Knowing that I don't really have much of a choice, <laughs> he just nods, <laughs> accepts. Um, I want to check that the guy is okay. Like I'm not a cleric, but I still want to um just check he's okay. And just before. do a quick medicine check. While she's doing that, I yeah. go over to peek out the door. Okay. See what's going on? Uh, sure. Go ahead and roll a perception check. 17 on medicine. Um, he's just really out of breath. Like, he, not knowing what else to do, has just run into the oh, place shit. where he knows a lot of, you know, travelling guardsmen and mercenaries tend to be, and he hopes that there would be people in there who were not afraid to stand up to scummy elven raiders. Okay, well, I run back to the bar really quickly to get my glass of water, and I give it to him before um, rushing out. He just walk uh... over with your water in hand, and as you walk out the door, you pass it to him. <laughs> Toby, you look out the door. You see very clearly that in pretty much a direct path to the entrance of the inn, there appears to be three elves who are circling and getting closer to a, a large-looking bug who, behind him, has a small dwarven girl who is cowering and holding onto his leg. The bugbear is holding a giant blade in front of him in a defensive position, and every now and again he's sort of swings it halfway to sort of ward off the elves as they try to get closer. Mix like looks over at this and yells to the uh, slavers, Oi, what do you think you're doing? Leave them alone. I really wish she I hadn't mean, done that. <laughs> you try and shout that out the door, but you gather that their attention is directed elsewhere right now. They're almost 100 foot down the road. Like, Oh, dang it. Yeah. They're not just outside the front door of the inn. Mix remembering that she's squishy, wants to run to the scene, but carefully and maybe somehow out of sight, if possible. So you just want to sneak out then and sneak yeah, down the road? Yeah, quickly, okay. but yeah. Uh, Toby, what is Toby doing? Uh, he's going to follow. So you guys make your way out of the inn. I'm going to wait until they've left the inn, and I'm going yeah. to calmly get up and walk towards the door and peer out. You can pretty much see the same thing. Like, as you walk out of the door... Actually, I'm curious to see whether or not you notice where they're hiding. Go ahead and roll a perception check for me. As you sneak up to the door, you see exactly where they're... And you see directly ahead of you three elves. And again, you see the bugbear. Um, what you notice about the bugbear is that he's very tall, but he's quite lanky. Something about him, he, he sort of looks almost half-formed. You get the impression that he's not an adult bugbear you've met bugbears before that were full, fully matured, he definitely is not. And you can see that he's doing his best to look intimidating, but he's looking kind of shaky, and he's not especially challenging looking. In addition to seeing this, you also hear footsteps coming towards the scene. 
You hear some conversation. You see the elves draw their weapons. Hmm. Okay, I've got my head and just sort of poking out the door because being a lizard guy, it's pretty hard to just peek your eye out through a door. I'm just going to stand here and wait and see what's going on. <laughs> right, how far am I I'm from the um, elf? If you give me like a distance in say feet. If you do what you okay. described, you will be about 100 feet away. Everybody roll initiative for me, please. <laughs> this guy is going to try and circle around over here. Then he's going to hold his action. Marin, what do you do? I'm going to move 30 feet. I'm going to hold a dart thing I have. It's a uh, range in case anyone goes for the bugbear or the girl. I mean, they are already going for the bugbear and the girl. You mean you want to wait until they actually attack? Nope, screw it. I'm going to go. Yeah, I'll go for this guy to the left, okay. up the closest to me. Go ahead this and roll your attack. Actually, that does not hit. Oh. Sorry. You pull out a dart, and you throw it, and he kind of dodges out of the way, and scales and says, What business have you here? Why do you meddle in our affairs? And the clear leader of the three turns to his uh, minions and says, Look, you take care of them. I'll take care of the boy as he moves in to square up with the bugbear. As you see him bring out his blade and he takes a slash, the bugbear casually deflects it with his glaive and the blade spins it away. He says, not today. Not today, buddy. And then and so he is going to rage. And you just hear him shout out, The girl stays with me! And he whacks out his glaive. And he goes for a... You see him in his stance, he kind of swings his glaive out as though he's going to hit the elf in front of him. And what he actually does instead is he launches it forwards and the pole starts to slide between his hands until it's extended at its full range. And he whips it out sideways. And he actually attacks the guy over to the right. And the blade catches him in the side of the head. And it does actually connect. He hits the bricks. Just like a sack of shit. God. <laughs> he just swoops this massive gaping wound in the side of his head as he pulls back Lave as quickly as he's able. And you see him, he's just roaring with fury into this elf in front of him, in, into the face of the elf. Toby. He's going to continue sneaking forward for his full movement along the side of the building. Um, how now, much of the situation am I able to read just from what I can see? Uh, I mean, you left the building knowing that the, the uh, that a dwarf ran into the building telling you slavers were trying to take his daughter, and as you were running out of the building, you heard the bugbear shouting, slavers, and then you saw him being like, back, cowards, and those are elves. And everybody knows about elves, right? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we sure do. Okay, so I'm gonna cast Eldritch Blast against the main guy. Instigating it all. Nice. So you sneak down and send forward a blast of charged energy, and this lashes out, and as it flies past the, the minion, you see him sort of turn and react, and suddenly he realizes that the two of you are sneaking up behind him, and he turns to warn his boss, and what happens as he turns is he sees the energy collide with his boss's back, and the elf actually gets forced and knocks to, uh, knocks to the ground. The force of the blow is so hard that he loses his footing completely. Yeah, he doesn't say anything to that, he just woof, as he is knocked forward. I don't show it, but I'm pleased. I'll continue my casual stroll moving half of my movement forward and extending my hand in front of myself i will sing burn baby burn heaven <laughs> inferno burn baby burn burn that sleever down which one uh, the one nearest you? to me so caught so, up in my singing that my, yeah, my so blast as, goes as wide. You, you're sort of wandering over with your casual pace you're like burn baby and what happens is as you're sort of singing this you, you forget the words and you're like what the, um... Burn baby Inferno, sure. Inferno... Oh, baby fuck it. And then you just, you release the energy and it kind of just dissipates in the air in front of you before it reaches its target. And you also feel slightly embarrassed. Luckily, the mask hides that and oh, you yeah. feel no shame anyway. I'm supposed mm -hmm. to be casually lighting sparks on my fingers and singing to myself. Yeah, it works out. exactly. It works out for me. You, you, you're casually strolling along just saying, mix. Yo, um, so first thing, gonna continue moving along forward, max of my movement, which is 30 feet. I wanna chuck a crossbow at, um, that fellow. <laughs> you roll out your crossbow, <laughs> you just right, throw right. it at him. Go ahead, roll a d20 for improvised weapon. No! 
<laughs> no, I mean, you, you can it. fire it for real if you want, but if you'd prefer, you can just throw a crossbow at him. I'm gonna That's fire totally it. Yeah. I'm oh. aiming specifically at his shoulder. I don't want to kill him. Uh, the one that's like I guess right in front of me, but thirty yeah, feet away. Yeah, that's closest or... to you. Yeah, that one. I think it would have been much more entertaining had Mix just sort of lost her composure, pulled out a crossbow, and loved it. I don't know. I mean, that pretty resoundingly hits him. You shoot a crossbow bolt into his shoulder, and he doubles over with the pain. You see him almost whack out, but he manages to stay on his feet. He rushes over to his boss, and he uses his action to help him up, and then he fucking runs. He just runs over, he runs past the corpse of his friend, doesn't give a shit, he just keeps going out of back. Don't let Shout him get away! That's all. This is your turn. Is that guy still on the board? Or rather... Uh, yeah, he... yeah, he's still... he's still in range. The running guy. Still in range, yeah. You've all stood effectively in the entrance to the tavern. I'm gonna cast Chill Touch on the running fella. Do you that. summon a skeletal hand. That's what uh, gets summoned and does the touching. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds so wrong. <laughs> you... you just reach out your arm. And you focus on this running guy, and you see a skeletal hand manifest itself in the air behind him, and it's transparent, and it passes through the back of his head as it tries to grab hold of him. So as you reach out and the you see the hand pass through him, as the bones pass through the back of his skull, you see his, his spine arch oh. as he's running, and his arms are split out as his body just collapses forwards into the ground. Yeah, dead. I'm going to allow myself a flight smile. Nobody not notices. The, not the best way to go. <laughs> Modern. I still see the main dude. The main guy is now on his feet uh, in front of the bugbear. Um, so, yeah. Okay, I'll just move over. I'll grapple him. You reach over as you see this other elf help him up. You rush over. The other elf runs and you watch him arch and collapse into the ground. You try to grab hold of this larger and sort of more prominently dressed elf and he kind of dodges and weaves between your grip and fights back your hands, Lapsal style, as he backs away from you. And he is going to, he's going to use his full movement and double dash. Uh, he's just going to get the hell out of dodge. And as he does so, you see him kind of like turn to one of his fallen compatriots. He spits and runs. Um, what a dick. <laughs> you see Scrawl the bugbear kind of relax visibly as he pulls his uh, glaive over and begins to wipe it down. He wipes it on the corpse of the elf in front of him. He just looks up and says, Sorry, no. Thank you all. There's uh, nothing I can abide in this world less than slavers. Disgusts me. I'm going to slowly walk over and make my way to the gathering. Yeah, I was going to say, can now that we're out of initiative, can I get closer to the bugbear and the girl? Yeah. Or attempt to grapple their priest. Well, you know, um, good attempt. Well, he was a slippery fellow. Any excuse, hey, any excuse. And uh, <laughs> Scroll looks up and says, I thought it was a fine job. Well done. He he turns and says, Come, Mindy. We should find your father. Would you like to all join me at the end? He turns to you, Abak. He says, That was a fine shot, friend. I'm glad I'm not on your wrong side. And he just starts leading the small dwarf girl back to the inn where he saw her father rushing over. Following them back. I assume we're following yeah, along. Hope. Well, again, he invited you, but no one. No, he's like, "Well, thank you, friends." Everyone's like, "Well, fuck you, buddy." Well, I think we'll come on, priest. Before we go, would you mind checking that elf out for me? They have various interesting things on them. Um, fine. Chop, chop. Oh, I'll, I'll go in there. And check the elf out. Ooh, ooh. Can I do the same? Not to loot them, but to figure, out, see if I can find anything more out about who they are and like if they're part of any particular group or sect or anything yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, sure. Can I just stand near them to see what they're doing? Yes. You, so, a uh, back roll of perception check and Murren and Mix roll investigation checks separately, please. Mix and Murren, how subtle are you trying to be? Um, um, I'm not being particularly subtle. I just want to know who they are and what are they doing here. Okay. I, I'm, um, I'm just um, checking the guy out, like. Yeah, if so he's good looking or whatever. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's what he asked me, so. Yeah, it's true. You're just going over there, you're checking mm -hmm. out his ass. Yeah. You, you, you wipe some of the I'm blood off his face. I'm just with my foot. You, you, yeah, you just, you roll him over. You're just like, mm -hmm. eh, he's a four. He's a four. <laughs> Look for interesting items, you dolt. You don't find anything of interest, no. <laughs> sadly. Mix, you don't know why I protect you, priest, pockets. sometimes. You pat down the pockets, Mix, and uh, you sadly don't find anything of interest. Uh, you find a couple of silver pieces, but nothing identifying. 
you don't find any sort of scrolls or instructions. These guys. Can I just... take the silver pieces um, so that I can give them to the bugbear and or the father um, for their troubles? Yeah, the, there's three silver. You can take those if you want. Okay, so uh, again, the large bugbear and this small dwarven girl have gone into the building. So welcome to the Dark Dragons Inn. Everybody. Ah, uh, good to be back. In. Vesterian is standing at the the bar and he's patting you, you see him sort of patting the distraught looking dwarf on the shoulder. And as Bugbear walks in with the little girl, his face lightens up immediately. He opens up his arms and the little girl runs over, Daddy! He's just like, Man, do you help? And he's, he uh, takes her up in his arms. He looks at you all. He's just thrilled beyond words. He doesn't know how to express his, his gratitude. And he naturally attempts to do so by offering to hug Toby. Toby just <laughs> backs right the fuck up <laughs> immediately. I'll take the hug. Mix takes the yeah. hug instead. Yeah, so you, you sort of see this dwarf running towards Toby like, thank you so much, stranger. And Mix kind of like steps in. He's like, thank you, welcome, yay! <laughs> I'll sigh this face. When I'm hugging him, can I give him the silver um, that I just took off the elves? You, you, you can yeah, you can give him the silver, and he just looks at you like, "What's I? I don't." Um... For your trouble, sir. Courtesy of the no longer present Elven people. Yeah, he's just—he kind of looks out the door and he's like, "Well, um, uh, thank you, Mindy. We should—we should go home. Your mother will be worried." He's like, "Uh huh." He's like, "Come, thank you again, friends. Like, I wish I could offer more than my thanks, but well, you have done me a kindness today, and maybe one day in the future I can repay." I should point out to you, one of them did get away. The Big one? Taller one? Boss one. Yes, he ran. He ran. Well, if he's running, he's probably running still. Elves are cowards when they're on their own. <laughs> <laughs> Mix is wondering where this whistling is coming from and why it's happening. <laughs> I'm, I, I, I'm randomly playing with my loot. Well, we don't see them around to these parts very often. Bigger towns tend to attract them. But nonsense, Stucker. It's a quiet place, and that's where we like to keep it. Only the Dark Dragon's Inn has... You know, well, let's just say the, the entire town's population will be in here tonight. And he turns to Vesterian and he says, And they'll be serving you, so get your stuff ready. Vesterian's like, Hey! I look forward to seeing you all! And then he turns to all of you and says, Friends, it sounds like you are all in need of a well-earned drink. Well, I would never say no to a glass of decent wine. I mean... I guess I could drink. Toby, could you drink? Uh, I'll have a small one. <laughs> small one it is. Would somebody okay. mind bringing it to my table, please? I'll go and sit down in the corner. And he just looks up, yes, of course, sir. A buck, you've been very quiet, other than warning this, this dwarf. This very intense is his girlfriend. I saw what you did. You have earned this too. Very well. Do you have water? Uh, I jet. If, if, if you insist. I jet. I do. It is a jet. I learned jet. Ah, yes, I see. I mean, no. <laughs> you are you are a card friend. But uh, I should finish my food. I have left it on the table. It is ooh, matured. Ooh. Um. Ah. Well, let me get you something fresh. What would you like? Hmm. Another horn. I have a recently killed. I have some recently killed game. Horse <laughs> for you. <laughs> oh, I like game. Inside check. Game is a good game. <laughs> You may insight check the barman. Uh, what was the question, Urbuck? I like game. Game is a good game. Yes! And how would you like it? Don't trouble yourself. I will have as is. I thought you might. Allow me. And he heads off into the back. And he the returns. End. Does tea exist in this campaign? No. No tea for you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank goodness for that. <laughs> she can't have real tea. She can't have fake tea. <laughs> <laughs> what specifically were you checking in terms of insight? Toby, uh, I was very suspicious about the way he said he had recently killed game. Oh yeah, no, I mean... I don't want no elf burgers. <laughs> I mean, he wasn't offering you guys anything. He was offering it specifically to a buck. Don't knock elf burgers, man. And uh, he, he disappears in the back for a few minutes, and he comes back with a small platter with a perfectly skinned small rabbit and it is garnished to the best of his ability to make it look like a, a fine dining experience despite the fact that it's not cooked and there is no sauce and he kind of he's like he's passing the tray to you smiling but you can see a part of him is dying inside as he wishes he could do more with it but he's just like i hope this is to your liking is my wine ever going to get here <laughs> 
Mix kind of like narrows her eyes at the masked gentleman in the corner, sounding very uppity. Vesterian calls across, of course, sir, please, I'll be with you in one moment. And he looks at that before. Will you all be seating together? I must let you know, people tend to dislike the way in which I eat. It is because of the blood. I don't even know any of your names. Oh well. I mean, I'll sit with you, but like, who are you guys? Well, you can call me the Doom Singer. That's generally what I go by these days. Do you think of Doom? Doom Singer. My name is Mix. <clears throat> who are you? And I point at the priesty man. He's the priest. Steps out with drinks and goes, "I am Bistidian. You may call upon <laughs> me whenever you need." <laughs> yes, right, where's yes. the wine? He's Thank you for the it, service. He's literally saying this as he is serving you the wine. <laughs> he puts down the glass in front of you and like brings out a face. It's like, here, sir. You accept Hold tips? It. No. Uh, he, just, he just turns away from you. Unfortunate. And, uh, I had a wit to the blind out the, the rest of the glasses. Thank you, kind uh, sir. Thanks. Yes, priesty man. What shall I call oh, you? Well, I'm Murren. I've been travelling with the um, fellow here for some time. Murren, nice to meet you. Robert. What am I missing? Uh... <laughs> the scroll speaks up and says, Well, you are all a handy bunch. And you, you can tell, like, every time... He's he's sat down with you all now, but he kind of looks uncomfortable in his own skin. He's a bugbear, but he's about six foot eight. And it's kind of like when you look at a bunch of kids who are in, like, seventh grade, and they look like miniature adults, and they're all gangly limbs, and they don't fit themselves right. Like, there's mm. something about them that they kind of look half, like, half-formed humans. They're, they're, the proportions are all wrong. Like, you oh. can tell there's a, there's an adult in there waiting, but it's just not grown into itself yet. Incidentally, and... I'll pick up my lute and strike a chord and sing, You're just a teenage bugbear, baby. <laughs> and he, he just turns to you and says, How very astute of you. I do try. Just go ahead and make a dex save. It's going well for Doomy. He's, he just turns and says, very astute of you, and turns back. And as he turns back to grab his drink, the drink flies across the table very firmly in your direction. And you sort of manage to tilt back on your chair just enough that the drink misses and the fluid just sort of spills out across the table. And he's like, oh, well, that's a shame. And he reaches off and takes your wine glass. <sighs> Murren, get my wine. <laughs> um... Another one, please. No, I want my wine. The bugbear kind of looks up and says, Looks like you don't have any. Bugbear, <laughs> please don't my wine. There's no need to start with this. I sung you a song. It's my trade, you dolt. Hi. Well. M Mix is, is watching this interaction being like, Why are you so mean to him? I'm just I sung him a song and he stole my wine and threw a drink at me. I threw no such thing. It was an accident could have happened to anyone. In which case, if it was an accident, then surely you would not mind handing me back my wine. And as you say this, Murren returns from the bar with another glass and puts it down in front of you. No, 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 I want my wine. It's wine all the same. He's more than welcome okay, to have that so... one. I would like mine, please. Scraw goes hold, takes the glasses in front of you, and I need you to roll a perception check as he essentially plays Find the Pearl. But with both the wine glasses in front of you. Hopefully one good roll so far would be quite nice. <laughs> so he like he's trying to swish these glasses around, but like he underestimates how sticky the wood of the table is and it kind of just kind of scrapes around. He's like, <clears throat> Well, this didn't go quite as I expected. Do you remember which one was yours? Yes. Well, take it. Right, um, should we start again? I do sing songs. I am a bard. Perhaps you should save your songs for when people ask for them, rather than passing social commentary. Not generally how bards work. We sing songs and hope for money, dear. Perhaps but you are you simply are. ask if people are going to pay you. Not necessarily. Sometimes one just plays and they pay. Apparently sometimes they also throw things at you. Well, that is very true. I have been chased out of more towns than I care to mention. I wonder why. Nick, well, I Nick can't, a mix, can't handle sorry. my art, obviously. You my are notes are too gold. Along, too, too essential for some. Uh, Abak, whilst the um, various humanoids around you are bickering, what are you doing? Just delicately, to the best of my skills, eating my meat and just watching them interact. Yeah, I, I figured that's what was happening. You're basically chopping down on this raw rabbit, tearing off jumps. Um, cool. no, I'm eating, well, I'm eating relatively delicately. I mean, um, I'm aware that in the past, blood going everywhere doesn't 
get you friends the last time. So you, you are using utensils to the best of your ability. <laughs> yeah. This gigantic lizard man is very daintily <laughs> holding a knife and fork <laughs> and trying to saw chunks off this meaty, uncooked rabbit. Makes Having a moderate sense. amount of success with the butter knife that you've been given. <laughs> She, she, she's observing this and finding it quite peculiar, and is, is just very interested in watching him eat. The love of Bahamut, would somebody <laughs> give that man a napkin? And Scraw turns to you and says, See? Commentary. And he turns to Mix and says, I am Scraw. It is a pleasure to make your acquaintance. I, that Mix reaches out her hand and is like, It's a pleasure to meet you too, sir. And his hand just engulfs yours, because, like, <laughs> oh. you're quite dainty, and he is disproportionately large, but rather gangly. And, Mix uh, thinks this is really freaking cool. It's like, oh, what big hands you have. He's like, <laughs> he kind of, he blushes to the, 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 as, 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 as well as a bugbear can blush at your, um, your, your interest. And he says, oh, well, um, you know, um, and he kind of puts his hands behind his back and he's like, just like, <laughs> it's, you know, it's, it's a bugbear thing. He's cool. <laughs> and then she turns to, uh, the lizardy friend. I'm so sorry. I haven't gotten names right yet. Um, and she pulls out her dagger. He and hasn't like, introduced himself to be fair. So would you prefer to use this instead of that dainty little butter knife? I don't think you're going to get very far with it. What are you giving him? Um, uh, my dagger to cut the meat. Can I at a glance determine how sharp the dagger is? Or try to? Go ahead and roll the check. This looks like a knife made for killing a man, so <laughs> there's it's pretty sharp. At a glance, you reckon it's probably gonna cut through this like butter. Mix, I think you went from underkill to overkill. Underkill, overkill. There is only kill and no kill, really. If you underkill, they're alive. It's a very strange word. I do not understand. I appreciate your gesture, but I must warn you, that's a, that's a nice knife. knife. Should you save it for its intended purpose? No? I mean, I can clean it off when you're done, it's alright. Do you not have concern over blunting it? These plates are not the best quality. I do apologize to the Therian. Trust me, just just take it. Trust me. <laughs> and Mix is just nodding her head like, yeah, take it, take it. If you insist. So I'll take the knife and then just begin very aggressively and methodically slicing up the last two rabbits. Yeah, so, like, once you have this dagger and you start, like, slicing, you find that the ease with which this passes through, it's like slicing a cucumber. It's just... Pieces come away in, in long, thin slivers that you can easily twirl up in a fork, like parma ham. It is good. Mm, it's Makes me very proud of herself. It has just occurred to me that I have not introduced myself. What is your name, stranger? My name is Abak Voss, and I... I'm a travelling doctor and surgeon. And I'm going to hold out my hand, still partially covered in blood, for a handshake. Mix is going to take it and shake it. Toby is shaking his head. Mix, <laughs> the old take and shake. Mix is just super excited to meet everyone, except for that like hooded figure, masked figure. She doesn't much care for him, but everyone else is cool. I'm going to hold out my hand to everyone else, too. It's okay. It... I got most of the blood off. Yeah, hello. <laughs> right. Oh, that's very droll. Yeah, Scrawl no, is the, 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 the well, nearest one, friend. so he just turns and shakes your hand. He's just like, well, next stranger. A doctor, you say? Yeah, yeah. Is anybody else uh, just shaking his hand? Or are they Toby is not hand? shaking his hand. <laughs> I, I'm going to do a, a, a very sort of casual, slightly sort of wave with one hand while sipping my, trying to sip my wine through a mask. <laughs> I just, just realised that's like the storyline oh, is I... like watching from across the room. He's like, "A friend, would you like a straw?" <laughs> no, you, he I didn't realise you hole. weren't going to remove the mask. It was like I'm so, I have a very nice mouth hole in my mask. It's fine. <laughs> He's just like, uh, uh, "As you wish." Oh, I'm just imagining like a little funnel in in the mouth hole and just like pouring the wine. In there. <laughs> yeah, and then it's just like pouring down his chin because that's not how masks work. The magical mask. It, it is a full face mask that he is wearing. His entire face is disguised by... Um, <laughs> and I'll tell you what, actually, before we continue, why don't you give everybody a, a brief breakdown of how the Doom, Doom Singer is currently adorned. I am wearing leather armor. It is a nice craft, but nothing to stand out. I, I is wearing general roving the countryside, stylish, rangery, green-looking clothing. He has a loot with him of deliciously fine craft. He has a hood over his head and is wearing a white white pearl-esque looking mask with uh, intricate engraving in. So it's, it's, a, it's a lovely, very intricately crafted white mask. All you see of me is my eyes and the mouth hole where I can slot my wine glass. 
So essentially, you are sitting around a table, everybody's jovially greeting each other, or sort of being a little bit standoffish. The person who's harassing everyone is wearing a full face mask and a hood. Uh, um, the longer he goes without removing the mask, the more suspicious Toby is becoming. He doesn't yeah, like I, it. I, Mitch just thinks he's weird and doesn't much care for him. I don't know if you ask me any questions, really, so you know. Don't need to. You, you've already offended <laughs> half the party without removing your mask. That suits me. <laughs> Toby's not offended. He's just uh, very suspicious. Mix oh, is very true. aware of people who do not treat bar staff very nicely. That is fair, as all people should be. So, uh, what brings all of you to this establishment? Is it to secure employment with the local trading wagon? I'm a, I'm a bard. I go from place to place. I play a song. I earn some money. As soon as I stop getting paid, I move away again. I picked I a priest a while back. Good fellow, sturdy, you know. Bye, um, thank you. Uh, Marin, while you were fetching Doomsinger's drink earlier, the barman and you were having a brief chat, and he caught your name, and he informed you that he had a letter for you, as much information passes through this in. Um, he handed it to you, and... Um, yeah, so Abak <coughs> has asked you what you're all doing here, basically. He was asking whether or not you are looking to travel on a caravan. Yeah, I, um, I, I, I've travelled the area looking for trade. It, well, in my barding skills, obviously, not by the cell things, I'm not uncouth. But yes, uh, can, while, while I'm chatting, can I look around? Is the bar got many other patrons in? It's actually completely dead. You guys yeah. are the only people here. Despite what you've been told previously about this place being a hive of activity, it's actually pretty bereft of clientele. You guys are literally the only people here, and none of you have paid for anything. But while, while everybody's talking, can I do a performance chat and just casually play my music in the background and make them think I've at least got nice, nimble, playy fingers? Um... In response oh, to sweet. your question of Obak, Scrooge says, uh, he just turns this, well, uh, I was here for, I was here for the, uh, the caravans, but I missed the last one. I, I hear there's supposed to be a, a new one coming through any day now, though. Hmm. That matches what I have heard. And I assume others are here with the intention of riding it. I'm also oh, a travelling tradesman, so much like our bar friend, I need to find a means of, well, securing livelihood. Do you intend to travel on the next wagon then? Will you be a traveller or a, will you be offering your trade as part of the journey perhaps? Yes, I assume that my trade will be required only for them to allow me on the wagon. That is, you know, what they call capitalism, no? Ah, uh, yes. That old chestnut. Well, trade is as trade does. What about the rest of you? Do you plan to stay here in uh, town or will you be moving on? I don't see I'll be staying long. There's nobody bloody here to pay me. Well, perhaps yes. you'll find a worthy employ on the wagon train. I'm sure it will be a thrilling journey. Oh, it sounds it. Caravans <laughs> with salesmen. Delight. Well, at least they'll be drinking. And uh, they may even enjoy your music then. Probably oh, for once can't actually hold back his snort of laughter. <laughs> I'm playing quite pleasantly at the moment. You can't knock me. I mean, you're playing averagely. I like, am. You're playing I haven't, about I haven't as good. Nine so uh, far today. You, you are playing about as good as an average musician could play. Yeah. So it, it, you're like sitting there and like tinkling along on your lute. You're like, yeah, let's do. You're 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 playing the beginnings of a local folk tune that you swear you heard was popular in the area, but nobody seems to recognize it. It's called Pathway to Heaven. So you guys continue your conversations, and you gather that through your bickering and your various dialogue, you get along reasonably well. You all take up rooms in the inn. As the evenings progress, you find that the crowds get larger each night until there is the reported bustling activity that you expected. Alas, that evening, the wagons arrive, in and this is indeed the uh, wagon train that Obak was referring to when he said that there was a town. It's up to you guys. You can choose whether or not to ride. This wagon train will be going to a little place called Baldur's Gate via a small town called Greenest. I say small town, it's quite a large town, really. It is the trade route that this particular wagon train will be taking and is the one currently on offer. Assuming you all agree to take this journey, how would you like to be riding? Would you like to be in employ or would you like to be traveling as a ride along and offering your services? Would you like to be traveling as a passenger and achieving something else in your own time? 
Well, it suits my purposes, all of you. If we generally uh, get on board here as a bit of a troop, as twere, I don't like travelling alone. Obviously, the priest accompanies me, but it's always nice to have more people, isn't it? There is a saying that I believe talks of safety in numbers. I believe that, the saying is safety in numbers. That has but, been said. Don't want those... Yes, I would, uh, I'd be happy to have you all along. Hey, safety, safety from slavers, I suppose. Yes, well, we don't see many of them around these parts, but... Surely, Fortuitous. if they were to uh, come along, it would be helpful to have such people of means and ability on the road. Would you uh, allow me to travel free of charge with my valet here? Um, if I if I play you a, a merry tune along the way and entertain the men at night? What does he do exactly? Uh, priest, what do you do? <laughs> oh, he, he, he does, he does, you know, he's, he's my man, he does for me, you know. I, I, I oh. help. <sighs> If I'll he's able him. to cover the watch during the night with the other mercenaries, I'm sure that he could join the wagon train at no cost to himself. Oh, he'll do that, yeah, he'll do what? that. Yes. He looks physically I'm capable. Glad I would be glad to offer Excellent. Him. What of the rest of you? What would employment on this train entail? What can you do? I have medical capacities. I am a surgeon, doctor. Ah, well, that would be excellent, actually. Our, uh, our last... Doctor tired of the whooping cough. It was rather unfortunate. Uh, Pretty poor doctor. Of, well, he ran out of opponents on his journey. He turns to you and says, you do have adequate opponents for at least the journey to Greenest, yes? I am quite resourceful. Excellent. And he, he looks at you over and says, yes, actually, I'm I'm sure that you are. He's going to stare at you now. Toby and Mix, are you taking this wagon? Are you going to work on the wagon in some way? Or, or uh, are you going to... Toby would prefer to work so that A, he doesn't have to pay for it, and B, can earn some money. Mix is all for working because, yes, money would be good, and she's also happy to offer her services to help if needed. Toby... I'm sure there's room. But Toby's like, um, I can offer magical protection and I can see well in the dark, so a night watch would be suitable. Ooh, yes. I can also see in the dark. I ah, can do night watch. Excellent! Night watches. Our men, hate them. Our men hate them. And it means we can run without a fire if necessary. Of course you'll need a fire to keep warm, I imagine. <laughs> I'm not cheap. I'm not cheap. Um, so, um, the payment for the journey in full will be five gold, because obviously you are part paid in the travel sport. Two, uh, we will be paid half up front and half upon arrival. Is that adequate for your needs sounds fine sounds all right to me so he basically he's offering payment but he is only offering this to toby murren scroll and mix who are offering to be guards effectively am i traveling free as i'm entertaining uh you are traveling at no cost you're right. excellent no that's fine that's mar marvelous uh murren are you satisfied with the two gold up front three on arrival yep so you guys are traveling on a wagon train now. There are a few random patrons who are also guards or merchants, traders and the like. They are all heading towards the town of Greenest, primarily to pick up more stock. Some of them are obviously, that's their final destination. Others uh, will be moving on with the rest of you towards Baldur's Gate. Do you have any particular desire to do anything during can your I, travels other can... than the work and sort of performing and whatever? I want to get to know my compatriots. I was, it's before you said performing, I was going to ask if I could perform to earn some coin. Oh yeah, I mean, you, you, you can be performing throughout the journey. If you want to make a performance role to see how frequently they let you play. I mean, I these, are, these are common folks, these are simple people. Finally. So the, the, the first night, you, you bring out your, your loot and someone's like, Oh, play us, play us the two banjos! The two banjos! And you're like, I, I have a single loot. He's like, two banjos! And I've done it, I've achieved and, it. And that's, that's what happens. You take out your four string loot, fine as it is, and you play the bottom two strings uh, fretless as though they are one banjo, and then you retune the top so that they are in a completely different pitch range, and you use a magnificent pickmanship to play all four strings alternately, so it sounds like you're actually playing two instruments dueling one another. I'm just imagining it's... Cotton Eye Joe, okay? Just the tune to Cotton Eye Joe have. Mix Basically. from the metaverse, here's Cotton Eye Joe. I'm now yeah, a midget fine. redneck. You are indeed. 
<laughs> and everybody's thrilled by it. Uh, and every night you are requested different things and you play your uh, your own way. You, you pick songs that you like, you play things that request, but every single night he just comes out pissed as a fart. No banjos! <laughs> um, how many nights in a row do you allow him to get away with this on this three-week journey? Uh, so how many? That's 21 days, that's, isn't it? Uh, that's 24 days. Oh yeah, that's it. The extra day, yeah. Is it three weeks? There, there is eight there is... days in the week. Oh yeah, it's not human magicness. Is yeah, it's, it? no, it's it's not Earth World calendar. Ten okay, days, so I'd play that you, for. You you get to like midway through the first uh, the the second week of your journey, and he comes out, and staggers over the edge of his wagon as he tries to get out, and before they've even finished up setting up the campfire, he's like puts his hand on his shoulder, he's like very 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 very, and he's like a uh, half orc half dragonborn, so he's quite large and intimidating. He's like very 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 too vengeful. <laughs> And he's like pointing he's in your like, face and like leaning over you. He's like two banjos, both both of them on on the one. Do do it again. It's great. Uh, <laughs> As he's pissed, can I try and persuade him that one of my banjos is broken? Yes. <laughs> do I get advantage because he's pissed? You don't need advantage in this instance. Uh, but uh, but tell me how you persuade. Like uh, how do you deliver the news? I casually put my arm on his shoulder and I the say the universal sign of drunk man friendship so yes precisely. immediately you just get advantage <laughs> you don't need to follow through with that but. and I say um, my, my dear friend unfortunately due to the regularity with which I've performed the tune that you love so very very frequently um, one of my banjos is sadly taken ill and is no longer able to perform <laughs> Go ahead and roll your uh, your persuasion with advantage. Okay, so yeah, you you lean over and you're like, friend, it's taking the you, as you're saying this and you're talking, and he's like, initially he's like grinning at you like, oh, I'm gonna play the best song ever, and you start describing, and it's as though his own mother has died. Aww. You watch his heart break and his face just slumps, and he looks at you and says, I hope it gets better. <laughs> <laughs> and he just slings back <laughs> off into his wagon, <laughs> tankard, no longer full. As as he took the news, he unwittingly emptied his his ale onto the floor, <laughs> and he just he slumped. And the next few days, you see him. He doesn't come out for music. He just he's just sitting in the back of his wagon, resting his head in his arms. And anytime anybody asks him if he's alright, he's just like the banjo. It was me. <laughs> we eventually, are the banjo. eventually, you know, he he starts to rejoin the troop and and watches. And for well, by the time you start getting close to Greenest, he has paid you fully two gold in tips. Everybody else is stingy as fuck, but he just tips just constantly. Right. And he's kind of like he he comes up to the side one night and sort of this is after you've delivered the news. He says, "Sorry about the banjo," and he gives you directly uh, a, a silver piece. So, I hope this nice. helps. I'm sure um, it will, my good fellow. I'm sure it will. Is anybody else doing anything during the journey? Toby basically just sticks to mix most of the time, but by about halfway through, he's starting to relax around people. I to will point, point out that this entire journey, Doomsinger has not removed his mask and refuses to be called by anything other than Doomsinger. Oh, he's not like getting more relaxed around him, <laughs> just in general. <laughs> yeah, in the, 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 the travelling companion. No, that's fine. Um, um, I think I mentioned or tried to, but Mix tries to get to know her fellow travelers a little bit more during the journey. Um, and as we brought it up, she kind of wanders over to to the Doom Singer and is like, "Why are you called the Doom Singer? Why don't you have like a name name?" Um, can we let her persuade me? Yeah, I mean, if you wanna. I mean, I'm hella charming. Well, see, see your persuasion, <laughs> see your persuasion Rob, and See how much I'll give you. I'd say by the time you're having this conversation, it will be at least a week of Ooh. traveling. Oh, That's yeah, good. Charming. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> what about the rest oh. of you? Is there anything you guys are doing on your journey? I'm gonna use my opportunity whenever I'm doctoring people to. I've got analysis of all the really weird crossbreed folks that are around here. I uh, that half dragon, uh, half dragonborn, half um, what was he? Half dragonborn. That half sort of thing is not that uncommon. Um, that's just basic genealogy. So it wouldn't be especially unusual to a buck. You can still do that, but it wouldn't oh, be yeah, that unusual to him. 
Yeah, no. Every day it's cold out. That's fine. So, one of the nights, there is a watch ongoing, and uh, one of the mercenaries takes a heavy wound as a horde of rampaging creatures, uh, bears of some kind, for some reason, attack the fire that is on the ed edges on the outskirts of the encampment. Takes a pretty nasty wound uh, across his chest. He obviously seeks you out, or rather they bring you over to him, and he is a gnome, um, but he is not a full-blood gnome by any stretch of the, the words. He is actually a gnome who's essentially come from a parentage of gnome and goliath, and so he is an exceptionally tall gnome. He is about as tall as your average dwarf, if not actually a little bit taller. And unlike pretty much any gnome, he is growing a gratuitously large... Go ahead and roll a medicine check for me. You killed the gnome. <laughs> I don't think I killed him. We just didn't get any better. You, you let him die. <laughs> um, let him die. You fix him up well enough. You stitch up the hole in his chest to stop the bleeding. He's not doing great. In the next few days, he gets a pretty nasty infection, and you treat that as well. And it manages to help him clear it up, but he is no longer able to do mercenary duty through the rest of his journey. And you get the impression he's going to have a fairly nasty scar for the rest of life. However, when he's recovered from his fever, he does actually stop by and he thanks you for saving his life and shows you the gnarly wound because you obviously you're inspecting it to see how it's coming along. And uh, he kind of proudly says, he's, uh, when I get home and show the missus, she's going to love that, she will. She's all about scars. I'll tell her a great big 10 foot tall fucking mountain tried to kill me. It'd be great. Cheers, Doc. He kind of just... Mountains don't have claws, strange fellow. Morin, you have temporarily escaped the Doomsinger, uh, as <laughs> you are regularly on mercenary duty, um, mm -hmm. and you have your own obligations through the night. Yes. What's what's going on with Morin at the moment? What's he thinking? I'm just thinking about uh, getting getting to greenest. So that th that's the main thing. You're just focusing on the fact that you're getting to greenest and. Uh, yep. and uh, Looking mm -hmm. up, looking up. Someone in the neighborhood, as it were. Hey, is there anything that you'd like to do on your journey? Is there anything you'd like to work on can making I, something? Can I you make can... darts at all? Uh, I have carpenter's tools. Okay, yeah. So if, you, if you've got carpentry, carpentry proficiency, I'd definitely say you can make darts. Yeah, sure. Go ahead and roll a dex check. Very fine work. You try to make some darts, but mostly you end up with a handful of... Splinters. 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 <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Um, okay. What do you do about that? Do you seek medical attention, or...? Uh, oh, actually. Hey, hey, doctor. Um... Yeah, so you, you seek out a buck. Yep. Here comes Septicemia! <laughs> oh, God! So, oh, buck, I need you to roll a... Roll an intelligence check. Uh, it's me? actually going to be two rolls, a buck. It's okay. going to be a perception yeah. check and then an intelligence check. Yeah, go roll intelligence with advantage. 22. Jeez. Okay. <sighs> so, as uh, this half orc approaches you, he is there to tell you about his wound, etc., and so forth. He can, as you have this interaction with him, you notice that Murren's fairly slight of build as orcs go, and he doesn't have any particularly prominent odd features. He doesn't have scales as though he were half dragonborn. He doesn't have a beard as though he were half dwarf. He's not particularly short, so obviously gnomes and the like are out. He's obviously not part halfling. You try and narrow down just through a process of elimination the things that Murren could be, and you realize with an eventual certainty that there's only really one of two things that Murren's other half could be, elf or human. So because of that, I'm actually going to bring in... Okay. Um, yeah, so oh. you go and see um, Urbuck for your splinter problem. Hello, Doctor. Um, ah, I have bought a few Free. splinters um, to be able to get them out for me. Wouldn't trouble you so much, please. Of course. Some, that's the problem. Some people that had splinters have more than a trifling childhood injury. Something to laugh at, but they can carry infection. And as we all know, if infection takes hold, it can eventually go through the entire body, thus killing. It's a rather fascinating way, really, that just a smallest blade can kill a man. Makes me wonder why we use swords. I apologise. Well, I ramble sometimes. You're a freak, though. You understand the whole discourse and 
life and death, of course. Yes, yes. It's an eternal cycle. Go ahead and roll a medicine check for me, Obak. I just want to work out whether or not you horribly mutilate him. So, Obak takes your hand, and he's actually surprisingly delicate for someone who's so physically large and hasn't necessarily got the most perfectly formed hands. And quite rapidly, um, your hands feel no pain or discomfort, and you can move them freely without issue. Fine job, Doctor. I can inquire as to how you conceived this injury. Um, well, I was, uh, just trying to replenish my dock of darts and, um, pose one needs a steady hand and probably not on a, traveling on a moving caravan thing. Ah, of course. Yes, you may want to wait until you're perhaps your next watch. So, of course, I need to be watching your hands and not the knights, and knights is, of course, where all our problems come from most of these days. Good advice, Doctor. Perhaps wait until we reach Baldur's Gate. Maybe safer there. The sanctity of an inn is a much safer place for woodwork. Well, I shall take you. Uh, Toby, <laughs> Mix Hello. is Mix was bugging the Doom Singer during your journey. Again, you've had three weeks. I know that you were sort of mostly shadowing Mix, but was there anything during the journey that you would like to accomplish? He's probably at least read that letter he received and is thinking about, and is probably thinking about that most of the sure. time. So, for the past several days, you guys have been traveling a road that winds lazily across the rolling grasslands of the green fields. It is the uh, fifth day of the fifth of spring, and sundown is approaching when your wagon train tops a rise, and you see the town of Greenest, just a few short miles away. <laughs> However, instead of the pleasant, welcoming town you expected, you see large plumes of black smoke rising from burning buildings, running figures that are little more than dots at this distance, and various small shapes whirling their way through the skies, low over the keep that rises above the center of the town. Greenest is under attack. <sighs> well, this looks promising. Um, Mix kind of, like, goes from her, like, quirky, friendly demeanor to quite serious and basically rushes off the caravan to try and help. So you just jump off the caravan and start, uh, charging towards the town? Yeah. Okay. Scrawl sees you do this and says, A wise decision! He jumps down and starts pelting after you. Um... Toby follows uh, after, yep. but he also sends his raven on ahead. Am I to assume this caravan has other guards? Yes, they have all, all the caravans have stopped. Can um, I do a, towards... an elaborate performance of standing at the front and Winston Churchilling it and try to encourage them to charge with us? Yes, you can certainly do that. Uh, how do you go about doing that? Uh, I will stand uh, in the most prominent moment part of the caravan. I can stand on the highest point where I can see the most. And I will orate magnificently about <laughs> death and glory and fighting in the streets and fight them in the air and in the trees and in the cupboards and we will never surrender. Sadly, you do not get an advantage run. because they are... Oh! Uh... <laughs> Lauren, <laughs> Lauren uh, before you dash off, mate, what do you... Yes! Good job. <laughs> Lauren. Before you dash yes. off, what are you doing? Are you? I was going to jump off and yeah, follow them. Okay. Yes, you stand on the top of the wagon train and you give a rousing chorus performance of "Once more into the fray, we must go to the town and help these people," etc. and so forth. And as you're saying all of this, your speech comes to an end, and a man steps up to the front of the caravan next to you and says, "And remember who's bloody paying you, and don't abandon us when there's bloody fire going on." Nonetheless, a few of the mercenaries do actually rally at your cry and head charging towards the town. They, so you guys are heading in one direction. The mercenaries actually end up splitting off as you are rushing towards the town. They're aiming to come round uh, the town from another entrance or from another direction to try and cover a larger, uh, larger area of ground to better provide the town with assistance. So some of the mercenaries stay behind uh, with the caravan because as the owner of the caravan points out, their goods and their lives are also at stake, but a good majority of them do leave the caravan and rush to the aid of the towns. Uh, Murren, you see as you're giving this speech, has leapt off the caravan and is also charging towards the town. I believe at this point that just leaves our back, Doctor. Well, I'm not going to lie, that speech has probably had a bit of an influence on me. 
even though I was probably expecting it to. So I decided, yes. eh, kind of jovial, why not? Before I do, um, I'm just going to quickly check around the wagon I'm in. Is there any like, alcohol around? Just to say, as my troops are running off, I run after them, singing, Let's get down to business <laughs> to <laughs> defeat the Huns. They sent me goblins. Uh, what were you looking for? Any uh, small any amounts of alcohol or sand? Or both? Uh, alcohol, <laughs> yes. Sand, no. Okay. Um, a small amount of alcohol. I don't think I can put it in, actually. Do I have any, like, glass compartments in my component mm, No, but, I mean, you could grab a bottle. Like, there's a, co- there's a couple of bottles of fine wine. Hmm. I'll leave it for now. Leave it for now. Not worth it. Um, I'm going to cautiously follow everyone else. Keep in keep. So as you guys near the town, you see, you get to the point where you are approaching a bridge and again, you see a lot of smoke, you see a lot of small fires. You get the impression as you get closer to the town that it's not so much the buildings that are on fire, but there's a lot of sort of things that are near buildings on fire. You get the impression that whatever's happening here, there's a lot of intent to cause havoc rather than destroy. So as you are rushing into the town, you encounter three kobolds are looking around and they're looking for something ash. Uh, and they catch sight of everybody go ahead and roll some initiative. I'm back to my usual rolls again. Oh good. Can't have you succeeding too frequently. <laughs> Not too right. That one success I've had thus far. <laughs> to be fair, I shouldn't have described them as kobolds. I should have said weird dog like dragon creatures. Too late now. <laughs> You know that they're kobolds, because kobolds are not uncommon in this world. Are they one of the races considered reasonable in, in day-to-day, or are they considered assholes by everybody? It varies, depends who you talk to. They live more commonly in chaotic society. They are sentient. Again, a lot like goblins in this, goblins aren't monstrous creatures. They are, in some places, just part of normal society. Kobolds are the same. They're kind of commonly... I think they would probably not be that common in lawful society, though they do exist. But these guys look like they're looking for no problem. you about to find out as they start whacking rocks at you with their slings. As you are a big shining beacon of glowingness, Nyx. They can't touch this. They're going to go ahead and try to attack you. I'll fight them. Well, yes, that's the hope. I'm going to go ahead and guess that eight doesn't. No, it doesn't. I, you see the first one rush ahead and go, Gah! as he brings back his sling and he launches it at you. And you, what languages do you speak? I speak common, celestial, infernal, and draconic. Okay, yeah, so you see them like muttering, and he's like, get the shiny one! <laughs> and he just, um, he, uh, he launches a rocket at you, but it misses, goes wide, and he's like, ah! He looks at his sling like it's broken. Ooh, I'm going to stick out her tongue and go, <laughs> at the one that failed. Marin is going to rush in like a fool. He's going to use one of his darts to try and throw at the one that attacked you. And that hits. So you see him rush in front of you. He just, with one arm, whips out uh, a small instrument that you've not seen him use before. Well, rather, you've not seen commonly used before. And the cobalt kind of just <laughs> actually fucking dies. <laughs> Wait, who died? The kobold that you just threw a dart through the eyeball of. Just fucking, like, he's he he ran over, he whipped out his slingshot, he tried to lob a pebble at um, Mix, and you retorted by running forwards and with that momentum launching a dart at the creature, and it penetrated his skull, and he is dead as he collapses into a heap on the ground. Lovely. Mix. I am going to move slightly here and then yeah oh. i'm gonna crossbow the the, the that closest one. one yeah oh also again oh, i'm also, aiming yeah. specifically for his shoulder not okay, trying to kill so... him because i want to question him but um you see it and he kind of goes, ah! and he turns to his friend he goes definitely get the shiny one as he like tries to pull the arrow out um and he kind of wiggles it like, ah! he doesn't like it uh toby yeah um, um can he see how well that kobold that nick nick's just shot is doing at all i mean he's looking pretty wounded like a pretty hefty gash knowing what she's like then he's gonna go for the other one with eldritch blast again so toby rushes forwards and sort of tries to get a handle on the situation sees the kobolds being blasted around and just goes oh that one looks fine smashes out uh, an energy blast and the creature is thrown from its feet and lands on the ground and is no longer moving Arba. 
Well, I have no idea that they want to capture this fellow, so I'm just going to give him a light tap in the face with my chill touch. You don't even move, you just reach out your hand and you focus your energies and you summon the skeletal hand. You watch as it moves down and focuses on the arrow shaft. Do you say anything witty as you yank it free to destroy him? No, I'm doing this very casually. You just like, uh, just reach out, you grab hold of the arrow shaft, and you yank it free. Lund basically, its entire body thrusts forwards uh, with the force of the pull, and uh, it collapses into a heap of its own blood and screeches. Mix uh, really, like, face palms horribly, and she's like, ugh, I should have learned. So you guys, so you got... are you doing anything right now, or are you just rushing into the town? Toby whistles to call Oz back to him, assuming the bird is close enough for him to hear. That's a, he is now scouting out the town itself, and what you realise is before you, you start whistling for him to return, and you look up and see that he is actually almost within range already. Um, and as he gets close, you just feel an overwhelming sensation of fear that he is sending to you. Toby stops dead. As you're sort of finishing off this battle, you look around and you hear, ha, ha, and you look up and he's getting in range. And as he does so, as he does so, as I say, you feel this overwhelming sense of fear. He gets closer and you begin to hear his thoughts and they are just jumbled. They're erratic. They're everywhere. It's just wings, wings, so many wings, wings, big, huge wings, teeth, 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 teeth. hide, must, must, must hide. Yeah, Obviously I think you can it, communicate. So you yeah, can... I think that Toy would call him back because yeah. he's not going to get anything else any more useful than that out of him. Him thing. Toad's so specific... basically like, "What's big dragon?" Oh fuck! And that's like the last thing that he thinks before he alights on your horns and buries his head under his wing. You guys are on the edge of town. <clears throat> you just finished off these. Kobolds, and again, there is a lot of havoc, there's a lot of mayhem. The streets of Green Est appear to be overrun. As you're watching across the bridge, every now and again you see like various groups of kobolds and smaller creatures running past. All of them are armed. You do occasionally see groups of people that don't look armed, that appear to just be running. Uh, Toby... It's best to go and find something to kill, aren't we, really? Toby Im immediately calls across to Mix, and he's just like, Dragon! Dragon? Dragon! What's a dragon? Ooh. And so, Mix, with your travelling with Toby, what you would know is that Toby has a connection with um, his crow yeah. that is uh, a mental connection. He is capable of very limited amounts of communication, and he has in the past used his crow to scout ahead. The crow has returned, and the moment that it does, Toby stops in his tracks and looks kind of horrified. And then that is what he says when he turned to see this look of fear upon his face. Uh, Mix is kind of wasn't expecting that of all things. Um, I also say that, like Toby is usually quite calm and well mannered. Toast. So yeah. it's not it takes a lot for him to freak out. Well, because I'm like sorry, I'm actually gonna move closer yeah, to Yeah, so right now everyone's just looking at Toby like dragon, what? And they're looking around at the skies like uh, what the hell Toby, are you talking about? Do you do you know where where is the dragon? He just like he just put it's it's up there somewhere, Oz saw it. And obviously she knows Oz is his raven. <laughs> Can I try and convey that to our other party members because they wouldn't know? I mean, he did just say dragon out loud and they're all looking around like, what the fuck are you talking about? Yeah, exactly. So <laughs> what is this crazy clarify... tea thing? Um, yeah, yeah, I mean, everybody from. go ahead and roll a group perception check. Toby, you don't need to roll perception. You need to roll persuasion. They all think I'm crazy. <laughs> Not me, though. <laughs> Actually, to be honest, with a persuasion roll like that, you know that she's got a connection with Oz, but, I mean, he's just a bird. <laughs> and you guys are all looking around, and you can see there's a couple of wyverns in the sky. Wyverns are very reptilian. They're a lot like dragons. They're, they're on a much, much smaller scale. There's also a couple of... You've seen, as watching across the bridge, um, you guys are seeing that the occasional kobold that runs past actually has wings. And a kobold is essentially, uh, essentially like a dragon, but like if it was dog-sized. So, I mean, there's things that are flying around that sort of look like dragons. Like, you know, mistaken identity, probably. Mix has an idea of how <laughs> yeah. to uh, confirm what the heck's going on, and she tries to find someone near about that isn't fighting to, who's running away essentially and ask them yeah. what's happening. With that perception roll, there is no one on this side of the bridge. No one has made it out of the city. 
Uh, but if you guys want to run into the city and find out what's going on, if you try and find someone, then... Cautiously, because even though I'm not convinced at the moment, sadly, Nina is, Mix is not, she will cautiously proceed deeper into town, so crossing the bridge. Yeah. So by the time you've made it to town, it is actually quite dark out. There is a lot of dim light in the city because there's a lot of fires everywhere, but they're not big fires, nothing that would have been caused by, for example, a dragon burning its way across the city. There are a lot of, uh, as I say, small blazes. You find things like carts with goods that have been set on fire, haystacks from barns, you know, flower stands that have been set on fire. There's a stream that you cross over as you pass the bridge that appears to run the majority of the way around the edge of town and has, from where you're standing, has a lot of high bushes and brush, and it does appear to travel the majority of the way around the town that you can see. Are you guys all going to follow, Mix? Probably is. I'll, I'll continue follow. my general saunter forward, whistling as I do. Mm. The world is burning down around him, he's just whistling. Uh, you're casually strolling forward. Marin, how are you approaching this? Because Scraw has just, uh, like, once Toby is like, DRAGON! Scraw's like, REALLY? WHERE? And he just runs forward, he just runs straight into town. He's just like, THIS IS GONNA BE GREAT! And he's just like, COME ON, FRIENDS! LET'S TAKE DOWN THESE VILLAINOUS SCUM! And he just sweeps aside a kobold with one heft of his glaive as he runs through. And they are everywhere, like, predominantly what you are seeing all over the place is just kobolds. Um, lots of that. I'm going to follow the last person I'm going in, uh, a, just cautiously. Okay. So I'm definitely staying at the back. Just keeping my eye out, you know, remaining calm, trying to sure. assess the situation. So you guys are making your way cautiously into town, and as you do so, the scale of the situation really becomes apparent. The screams in the distance, the volume of chaos and noise that's happening here is just overwhelming. You are running down one of the major thoroughfares, when, without warning, a small family of five dash out from between two buildings on your right. There's a limping male gnome, and he is with three young children. He's holding the smallest of them as he rushes across the street, fleeing into the shadows between buildings. He's dragging his two gnome children behind him, and shortly thereafter, a badly beaten and heavily injured looking dwarven woman bolstering a shield and a snapped spear uh, comes staggering out of the same areas. And she's backing away and sw swinging her spear and slamming it against the, the shield. She's like, come on, you miserable fucks! As she's clearly trying to deter something. And as she does so, you see that she is being surrounded by kobolds. Roy is definitely taking the lead at this point. <laughs> Just like, ah, it's going to be so great. Next, Toby, Doom Singers, casually strolling behind everyone. So we've got to move everybody a few feet forwards. <laughs> if I wasn't so freaked out right now, I'd tell him to shut up. <laughs> yeah. You can do that after that. <laughs> Boss, uh, you're also tailing. Yeah, so as you are taken aback as this woman suddenly pops out of nowhere, the kobolds fan out around her and they quickly surround her as she's like turning backwards and forwards, trying to keep them at bay, but also trying to maintain their attention. She clearly does not want them following the, uh, the gnome and their children. Uh, seeing as you are looking for someone, you appear to have found some. What do you guys want to do? Initiative. The kobolds, well, not necessarily. The kobolds haven't paid any attention to you right now. They are snapping at this woman and, like, you hear them jeering. Those of you who understand Draconic hear them sort of saying, Ah, <laughs> we'll finish you first, then we'll eat the children! <laughs> and, the sim and, and, and similar kind of jeering remarks and sneers. I will start singing one of my wizardly bells. Do you speak Draconic? No, but I see a load of angry things attacking a small thing, and I think, ah, yes, I yes, can... Sir. It's getting hot in here, so I'll ignite your clothes. It is getting so hot, I'm gonna melt your face off. And I, I cast Fireball. Which one are you attacking? I will go, there is one very nearly on a diagonal to me, up to the left. Yes. Um, so um, I shall go to that one. Sure, so everybody roll initiative. I will give you advantage on attacking that one in just a moment. Uh, actually, tell you what, instead, roll initiative with advantage, Doom Singer. Everybody else just rolls regular Oops. in it. I will warn you that this is the beginning of a very long period of time where there may not be any potential for rest. Doomslinger, uh, go ahead and you've already called it actually, so go ahead and use your cobalt, uh, your firebolt on that dude. I shall indeed. Behold a monumental miss. 
Yeah. Nice. Good job. Yeah, that definitely Ooh. is. Take that, you reptilian fuck. And then that. Oh no, it's a <laughs> resistance of fire. Oh. It's about um, typical. You see all these um, these kobolds surrounding this woman, and they're kind of like lashing out with their blades and sort of taunting her backwards and forwards. And then she turns towards one of them, trying to bat away their, their dagger, which she does so successfully. And you unleash a bolt of flame, which shoots out and slaps this one on the ass, and he sort of screeches. And suddenly the kobolds are actually paying attention to you. Uh, up until now, they just assumed you were on their side for some reason. I've just realised I've set my my spell to warm, not to uh, <laughs> this is reheat at the moment. Lauren, what are you doing? Okay. Go on, priest. I... Oh, sorry, bonus action. Can I um, bardic inspire the uh, uh, bugbear, please? You may. Cool. I will sing a... While I was firing off my spell, I will end it with singing a brief, brief, uh, inspiring song of bugbears, which I heard on my many travels about the exploits of the great uh, forebears of the bugbears and their, their mighty holds in the mountains and all the mighty things they've done, crushing cool. the weak and defending the poor. So, and as, as you do this, he turns to you and he's like, "'Tis a mighty song, Fred. I think you've mistaken us for dwarves, but that's fine." No, no, just... book, book bears live in caves and such. She's just like, yes, yes, you must know my history of my people better than me. My mistake. <laughs> um... yes, that'd be great. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, I'm gonna move here. I'm gonna tap this dude right next to me. With my mace. You rush over with your mace with one hand and you try to follow through with another. And it's just hopping around so much from being recently hit uh, with flames that it is not doing so well for itself, but it's sufficient enough to dodge you. Scrawl runs in, passes the kobolds, gets right up next to Lanana, back to hers, and he goes, ha ha, come on you little runts! And he is going to rage. He is just going to attack. The same one that you attacked. So yeah, he fucking destroys that kobold as he swings his gigantic glaive into its face. Uh, Toby. Toby's moving over here. He's gonna attack this one with Chill Touch. He is not going to attack that one with Chill Touch. <laughs> <laughs> so you try to manifest the skeletal hand that you've seen um, Urbach use so effectively. For the moment, it just escapes your grasp and you're not quite able to structure it correctly and the energy sort of dissipates in front of you harmlessly. Um, I'm stuck with Eldritch Blast. It's three kobolds. Oh, oh. Ouch. Okay. Murren, you see one of the kobolds lunge forward and stab the dwarven woman deeply with a dagger, and then her two friends, uh, its two friends, try to follow suit, but fail to do so. But she does look grievously wounded from that attack. Oh, but... Yeah, I'm gonna get a bit experimental this time. I'm gonna grab... I'm gonna try out this Toll the Dead spell I've got. He's killed by the sound of bells. Literally. Actually, yeah, he is. You guys watch as one of the kobolds drops to his knees, screaming and clutching his head as he, uh falls into not unconscious. Not unconscious. I'm gonna move a little bit closer, but not too close. Maybe here. And going to once again uh use my crossbow mm -hmm. um to the one I'm closest to, so the one next to the bugbear. Scroll is his name. But before I do, I wanna shout, um, leave one of them alive because I want to question one of them. I mean, we can grieve, we, we can injure them, but like... Uh, yep, yeah. so you take that one out, you drop it with your crossbow. The gnomish man and his children try to move forward and get a few feet further. This kobold fails to attack Lenan, but she retorts, she bats away the dagger and drives her broken spear through its face. So yeah, she fucks up that shit. Having just witnessed his friend be slaughtered wholeheartedly, he's going to try and attack her, and he succeeds. The Doomsinger! I will continue my gentle saunter forward at half rate, and I will sing feeling hot, hot, hot at the nearest kobold up to my left on the diagonal, and once more chuck a firebolt at its little old noggin. So this kobold goes up in flames, <laughs> screeching all the way down. <laughs> I guess he was hot for me. I'm gonna move over here between oh, and I'll oh, tug this guy right here. 
Uh, with my mace in its cool. face. So you bring your mace down uh, towards the kobold, and it brings up its dagger and clashes with the um, the the mace. Both hands is like aha, and as it turns and looks, you just bring your left arm round with a, a, a left hook and smash your fist into its face. It's like, ah! Bugbear rushes up, and he is going to attack this kobold out of here. He tried to hold back after the instructions about not killing them, and the thing, the glaive just cuts through it like butter, just decimates it, and looks back, feeling slightly guilty. It's like, sorry, Toby. Is one of them dead now, or is uh, there, there are only two that are left standing, and none of them are alive. The only two that are alive are the ones that have not been hit yet. Just deciding whether he's actually going to attack Sanko or not. He's going to move over here, and he's going to use Chill Touch on the one directly in front of him. Frustrated that it didn't work the first time. And frustrated that it didn't work the first time. <laughs> yeah, he's just like, oh, oh, okay, you've got this, Toby. You've got this. You've got this. Yeah, you've got this. He's still freaked out from... Uh, it's just, yeah, you, you're still shaking with the fear of the knowledge that you have that no one believes. Listening and, to. <laughs> yeah, you just, you can't, you can't focus. It's just not there. This kobold begins to start trying to run, having seen the worst for wear that his companions have fallen to. Moran, if you want to go ahead and make an attack of opportunity, scroll also rolls an attack of opportunity, and he... You bring up your mace as the creature starts running away, and you start swinging it down. At the same time, Scrawl starts swinging his glaive, and what basically happens is your mace hits it from one side, and the glaive hits Aww. it from the other, and you just smash the, the... The mace forces the creature into the glaive, coming in the opposite direction. Oh. Though you're both <laughs> trying to hold back not to kill this creature, it just <laughs> obliterates it. Blood viscerally. everywhere. <laughs> Pretty much. A buck. It is your turn. Mix is oh. praying right oh. now. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Should we try to show restraint? <laughs> so, I'm gonna chill touch this last, go this last um, kobold, but only gently. <laughs> you know, I'm not I don't think you get a choice in how gently. <laughs> yeah, magic is magic. <laughs> magic is magic. I mean, I'm trying, and that's really what matters at the end of the day. Yeah. Consider him touch. Go ahead and roll your damage. It shows Toby how it's done. Right, I'm doing yeah. it gently. You're giving him a faint... Nice and gentle, see? ...with a hammer. A, a, a faint skeletal tickle in the back of the noggin. <laughs> um, so right, you, you guys watch as this skeletal hand manifests above the creature. It slowly sinks down and then just goes up to the back of the head and wiggles its fingers. It goes... Dee -dee 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 -dee. <laughs> And the creature just, you watch as its eyes roll back into its skull as it collapses to the ground. You just have a Hadouken um, as you cast it. As this creature is most certainly dead. <laughs> I thought we were going to say ticklish. <laughs> it might have been. <sighs> Perhaps in a previous life. And that's all we had time for this week. Thank you for listening, and hopefully you can join us next time. New episodes will be released each Sunday for the foreseeable future, so don't forget to subscribe to our RSS feed, or on iTunes, or through your favoured podcasting service. The song that you heard at the beginning of this episode was Extravaganza by TRG Banks, and you can find this on Bandcamp at trgbanks.bandcamp.com. And the song that you are now hearing is While You Are Here by Ending Satellites. <laughs> <laughs>